Now, this might be the most important slide in the session because we only have 20 minutes. Uh, please write this down or commit it to memory. Uh, this is the, where my GitHub repository is. All the slides that you will see in this session are in the presentation folder, along with all the script examples that we will have. You can download that, review it at your leisure, even take the scripts and put it into a, a sort of troubleshooting runbook if you want. Um, there's also bonus material, more uh, ways to use who is active that I won't have time to cover in this 20 minutes. So let's get started with discovering hidden gems. The very first one I want to talk to you about is output column list, which despite being very wordy is going to be used over and over again throughout this session. You'll see in the examples. Now, output column list is going to allow you to choose which columns you want to see, and it's going to allow you to organize them. But one of the first things you'll notice is it's using box brackets, not commas. There's no commas in, at all. You just separate the columns you want to see using the box brackets. There's also a wildcard option. So if you wanted to see just the tempdb columns, you could say tempdb percent sign. And at the very end of this example, you'll see there's a percent sign in box brackets. Now what that's going to do is return all of the default columns that you would have otherwise seen, reads, writes, host, application, login, all of that. Um, if you want to see even more information. If you don't do that, then you'll only get the columns that you specify. The next thing I want to show you, uh, filter type and filter. You can filter on a few different things so that you don't have to look at all the information. If you want to see only the things for a particular login, you can do that. You would say filter type login, and then filter on whatever that login is. You can actually use wildcards in there, which is really handy if you want to see all the users from a particular domain, or if you want to see all the service accounts that have a particular naming convention. There are five things that you can filter on. Login, session ID, host, program, which is the application that's connecting to your SQL Server instance, and database. Now, I have database with an asterisk down there because you want to be really careful using that. That's only going to use the database from the context of the connection. If you have an application that's connecting to the master database and using three-part names to write queries, you basically won't be seeing those, and you may want to be seeing those because they could be the source of your troubles. All right, next is sort order. Uh, the sort order is basically going to be the same way as your output column list. You're going to specify as many columns as you want to sort on using box brackets around the name. You can sort in ascending order or descending order, but unlike the output column list, you do not get to use wildcards in sort order because it doesn't want to guess which ones you want to sort on. Again, uh, all of these slides are available at the GitHub repository, but I don't want to discourage you from taking pictures. Please feel free. <laughs> uh, let's see, one more hidden gem, get outer command. Uh, if you have run who is active before, you may have noticed that it only tells you the context of the current SQL statement that's executing. Well, what if that SQL statement is part of a stored procedure or some other batch? The get outer command is going to help you by uh, showing one extra column called SQL command, which will show you the source of the batch or the stored procedure that was called. Again, this can be incredibly helpful in troubleshooting uh, if particular stored procedures that may have things in there like wait for delay, and you're wondering, well, where's this wait for delay coming from? Next up, we have get plans. Now, by default, who is active is not going to show you the execution plans. Execution plans can be large. There could be a lot of them in memory. It may take a while to go retrieve that information. So for optimal performance, by default, it does not show you that. This may or may not be an issue on your system. Try it out. But the get plans one will then return the execution plan for the current uh, statement, as we can see here. There are two, actually, options that you can use with get plans. One will return the current statement. Two will return for all queries in the batch. You can click on this. Uh, this is a clickable XML that will open a new window in Management Studio. And it will show you the execution plan. If you are familiar with looking through execution plans and enjoy doing that, you can troubleshoot that way. All right. Now with that out of the way, let's get to my favorite part of this session, Unlocking Magic Spells, where we look at how to troubleshoot very specific issues on your SQL Server instance. My favorite here 
is what is really going on now. When you execute who is active, it returns a lot of information. You get a lot of numbers about reads, CPU usage, and other things. The thing a lot of people don't realize is that those numbers are cumulative over the entire duration of whatever the execution of that statement is. The delta interval uh, parameter is going to sample activity for a number of seconds. So if you want to know what's going on right now, you can use a delta interval. I have five as a sample here. You could use 10, you could use 30. But what that's going to do is return seven additional columns and those are all with the name Delta. You'll see an output column list. We've done wildcard Delta so that we get them all at the very beginning. So when we get the output, uh, we could easily look and see what's happening right now on our SQL server. To the right here, you can see some of these queries have billions of reads. And, uh, but at the current moment, they're only having uh, a number of 123. Now, if you haven't used who is active before and you didn't know, these numbers all indicate the number of 8K pages that are being used. They're not about, uh, you have to, if you want to figure out megabytes or gigabytes, you have to do a little bit of math to calculate that. But within the delta interval, it will return the, the values from that sampled time as opposed to all of the cumulative values. Now, specific situations. What filled up your transaction log? Who is active can help you hone in on this by uh, looking specifically at two of the transaction columns that unfortunately are hidden by default. You have to use the get transaction info equals one to reveal two new columns. The first column is trans start time. That's gonna show you the time the first database was written to by, any, any, uh, by, by the query, the statement, excuse me, in the, uh, in the query that was executed. The second column is probably more helpful to you when it comes to finding out what filled up a transaction log, whether it be TempDB or a user database. It's going to tell you, you'll see here in this example, it says MSDB5 and then 0KB. It's gonna tell you the specific database, and it's gonna tell you the number of log records that exist for that particular uh, query, and the size of the log records, the size of the transaction log that it's using. If it's using more than one transaction log, they will all be shown. You'll see all the databases uh, comma separated in that. Next example, what filled up tempdb? So this looks like a lot here. Again, these are all saved. You can uh, use these for yourself, but we're using the temp and the percent wildcard because those are shown. But I like to also show the, the get plans equal one, so I can see the execution plans to find out, well, why is it filling up tempdb? Is there an unnecessary sort going on in there? Is there something spilling to tempdb? What's happening? Um, we can sort by tempdb current, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, there are two tempdb columns returned by default using who is active. The first is uh, allocations. Now that's gonna indicate the amount of usage. You could have something with high allocations that's just simply creating an object, destroy it, creating an object, destroying it. Again, these are cumulative values over the execution of the SQL statement. The second is high tempdb current, or excuse me, is tempdb current. When you have a high value for tempdb current, that means it's creating objects and they're staying. And that's actually what's filling it up. So when you are troubleshooting what filled up tempdb, you can see we're sorting by tempdb current because that's the number of pages that are being used in your tempdb database. All right, what filled up memory? Now, this is a recently new addition to, or excuse me, this is a recent addition to a newer version of who is active. Who is active is still being maintained by the community. It wasn't just created 10 years ago and not maintained. Uh, and version 12, which I believe came out in April of 2022, has get memory info now as a, as a, a parameter. This is gonna return four additional columns for you that will tell you about the memory used by each of your queries. One of the really neat things about this is it's showing you the amount of granted memory, in addition to requested memory and max used memory, but also used memory. You want to see if there's a huge variation between granted memory and used memory. We were sitting in a session earlier today uh, where SQL Server 22 tries to do some adaptive features to try to um, 
rearrange that so that you won't have that much of a problem. It can uh, try to resolve this problem if you have massive differentiations between the used memory and the granda memory. If you're not on SQL Server 22, you may have to go in and do something else by C. Do I need to update my statistics? Do I need to set resource governor on? Whatever corrective measures need to be taken to see what's uh, consuming all the memory with your transactions. And now, well, this is, um, a lot of people seem to, to find this one very valuable. What's causing the blocking? If you've ever used who is active um, to try to determine the blocks, you'll see it has a block session ID. And by default, if you have dozens or even hundreds of active queries on your uh, SQL Server instance, you're gonna see a whole lot of information and you're trying to figure out, well, wh which one's the block leader? There is, there's a few parameters we're gonna use here, uh, new ones. The first is find block leaders. This is the most helpful one. What this is going to do is it's going to add two block session ID and block session count. That block session count, as you can see up in the example, is what we're sorting on descending. That will instantly tell you what the leader of the block is. The one that has the highest value. That's why we're sorting by it descending. You can go and look and see if it has an open transaction, uh, if it needs to be killed, whatever the case is. There's a couple other things I want to point out. The next one is the get locks parameter. Now, when we set this to one, it's going to return an additional column that is an XML column that looks like this. Now, uh, XML isn't easy to read, admittedly. But you can dig into it, and it will give you the information about what the specific lock is. So when you're having the blocking, if you're trying to figure out where the actual source of the blocking is, you can see it will have uh, an object name and what kind of lock is created, uh, in this case, a schema S lock. More information to help you troubleshoot blocking. The last thing I, that I like to do when looking for blocking is to have the get additional info set to one, which is a very vaguely named uh, parameter because there's just a lot of information in there. Another XML column that when you click on it, it will bring up a whole bunch of information. But I want you to just focus on a couple things that will help you with blocking. The first is the transaction isolation level of your transaction. Maybe somebody actually, uh, forced a, a read serialized in there to, to cause the blocking. This would be, you wouldn't know that unless you use this additional parameter. There's also some information on deadlock priorities if your blocks escalate into deadlocks and something else you have to troubleshoot. All right. Last thing I want to talk about is time traveling, and that is how to use who is active, capture the activity into a table that you can use later uh, for troubleshooting whatever the problem was when you weren't looking at SQL Server. If you don't have a monitoring tool or you don't have a budget for a monitoring tool, this is a, a free solution that you can use uh, to monitor whatever went wrong on your instances. Well, the first thing you want to do is uh, create a table. Who is Active has a built-in feature to allow you to create that table without hardly any work at all. There are two extra columns. One is return schema. We just set that to one. Okay, give me the schema. And then we're going to set another parameter, which I set, I called schema, that you could call it whatever you want, uh, as an output. Uh, actually, within store procedure of who is active, it is called schema, but I just kept the same name. A variable character max field. This is going to output, you're saying, I want to create a table, and here's what I want to capture in that table. Now, we've talked about a few extra columns we can reveal by putting get transaction info, uh, get outer command, get plans today. I want to execute that over and over again, let's say every five minutes or even every minute. I'll put that one, the, the way I'm going to execute it, add these two additional columns that are highlighted, and I'm going to specify the name of the table here. That's what this little bit at the bar, uh, bottom of replace is. It, within our output here, the, at the very bottom of select schema, we're going to get this output. It's the create table. So who is active will give you the SQL to create the table itself. The only thing you need to do is specify a table name and then replace in the uh, angle brackets or chevrons, whatever you prefer to call them, around the table name in this script, replace that with your table name, and then you have at the bottom here something you can copy, paste into a new window, and boom, you have your table. Now one thing that is 
not provided within who is active that I would highly recommend is creating a clustered index on the collection time column. This makes sense for two reasons. One, you're capturing information chronologically. So each time it will put it in at the end in order. But more importantly, whenever you're going to be querying it later, someone's going to say, hey, what was happening on the server at 11 a.m. yesterday? Well, you're going, to be you're going to be querying based on collection time. You may query on other things, such as who was the login or what have you, but collection time will almost always be the one you're querying on. This will help your query performance vastly. Next thing, create a job. Creating a job in SQL Server Agent is really easy. Create a job with whatever you want. Just put this in the step. You're going to see that we have executed, we're executing who is active, but very first we're declaring the table, the same table that we just created. We're going to execute who is active, and then we're going to put those same three parameters uh, that I'm using, get transaction info, get hour command, get plans. You don't have to use those three. You can use none if you want. You can use different ones if you want. Just be sure to be consistent and put them when you create that table originally. The destination table then is a separate parameter than we'll use when we execute it over and over in our job so that who is active will collect the information you want and then using this destination table parameter, we'll put the information in that table. And lastly, query the table. And then you have a table that looks just like the who is active output when you click execute every single time. All right. So we're all wizards now, right? We have a question on the screen. All right, so all of these work in SQL 20. The question is, so all of these work in SQL 22 and Azure SQL database? SQL 22, yes. Azure SQL database, not necessarily. Uh, some of the things at the end here we were talking about storing on, uh, in, a, in an agent job, that might be a little more complicated for Azure SQL database. But in SQL 22, yes, so who is active is fully functional with SQL Server 22. 22. SQL, SQL Manage Instance should work. You, you have a master database, uh, or you can put it in a user database. Um, I prefer to put who is active in the, in the master database so I can call it from the context of any database. <laughs> yes, next question. Absolutely. You could, you, yes, you could. Uh, the question was, can you put schema in the names when you're creating the table? Absolutely, yes. I just uh, didn't do that for simplicity's sake. Yes. Yes, exactly. That you, would, you would create the whole thing with open brackets, yes. Any more questions? Yes. Okay, so the question is, when you add additional columns, um, if I specify output column list, do we need to add them? Yes, you do, because whenever you say output column list, it, you're going to tell it, I want these specific columns. Now, if you, if you don't specify output column list and you just use some of the parameters we used, did I misunderstand the question? All right, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Do you need to change this uh, columns list, or is by default add them? If, if, I, if I don't, don't specify this column list, right, and I add uh, delta or get lost, I think I, I do get some additional uh, columns. But my, my question is, if I do need to uh, configure them in the column list. Yeah. So, do you need to configure them if you out, uh, if you say I want to output locks or, or yeah. get delta intervals? Yeah. So, if you're specifying output column list, you're overriding whatever the default would be. So, if you didn't use the output column list, they'll show up. They just won't be right there as the first few columns. And maybe one other question? Uh, sure. Let me, let me put this up here uh, just for anyone else since we're right at time. Um, thank you very much again for, for having me for to SQL Bits. Thank you all for attending this session. Uh, this is the QR code. I would greatly appreciate any feedback on this session to help make it better for others. And uh, thank you. Thank you again.